What happens when a system is unstable? You're used to hearing instability when you hear feedback from a speaker when it's too close to a microphone. When you're studying a system in the Laplace domain or S domain and you know where its poles are, then you can figure out whether it's stable or not. I'm going to explain how in this video. Poles are the S domain coordinates where the system transfer function goes to infinity, but they also give us information about time domain behavior. Let's look at the general form of a system transfer function big H of s for a linear time invariant or LTI analog system. H of s is written as a ratio of products of root expressions. If the denominator has more root expressions than the numerator, then there are more poles than there are zeros. And you can use partial fractions to rewrite the transfer function as a sum of fractions that all have constants in the numerators. If you apply the inverse Laplace transform, or refer to a table of Laplace transforms, then you'd see that the time domain impulse response is a sum of time varying exponentials. The behavior of these exponentials depends critically on the pole values. Let's go over how. Generally, poles can be complex with real and imaginary components. If there's a positive imaginary component, then a pole must have a matching complex conjugate pole with a negative imaginary component. Let's consider a complex conjugate pair of poles, that's two poles, written as a single fraction. This will have a first order function of s in the numerator and a quadratic function of s in the denominator with generic real constants alpha and beta. With the properties of Laplace transforms, the fraction becomes an exponential multiplied by a sinusoid in the time domain. So generally, complex poles lead to an oscillating impulse response in the time domain. The oscillating frequency comes from the value of beta, which is the imaginary component of the pole, and the exponential behavior is controlled by the value of alpha, which is the negative of the real component of the pole. So now let's look closely at the impact of alpha. This is the key component for understanding stability. If alpha is positive, then we have e to a negative constant times t. This tends to zero as time increases, so we have a decreasing oscillation over time. We call this stable behavior. If alpha is zero, then the pole is on the imaginary s-axis. We have e to the zero, which is just one, so the oscillation continues at the same amplitude for all time. We call this marginally stable behavior. However, if alpha is negative, we have e to a positive constant times t. This goes to infinity as time increases, so we have an increasing oscillation over time. We call this unstable behavior. In other words, an LTI system is unstable if any of its poles have a positive real component. An LTI system is stable, and its impulse response goes to zero, if all of its poles have negative real components. So what do unstable systems look like in practice? Do they just blow up? Not usually. Most practical systems have a maximum output that they can generate, so they usually just saturate if they become unstable. This is what happens with microphone feedback. It sounds annoying, but it's limited by the volume of the speaker. We can use poles and zeros to say a lot more about system behavior than just whether the system is stable. In upcoming videos, we'll go over how LTI systems, including analog filters, respond to inputs of different frequencies. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you liked it. You can leave feedback in the comments or subscribe for more videos. There's also a link to lecture notes in the description. See you next time.